We'd like to take a moment to thank our friends at Hester and Cook for sponsoring this podcast. Hester and Cook believes there's always a moment to celebrate, and we could not agree more. They make the most beautiful tablescapes for your holiday hosting, all from paper. Yep, you got to see it to believe it. So stop by their stores around Nashville and Franklin or shop online for the season's best holiday decor, gifts, and specialty tabletop items. Use promo code MAGNOLIA for 15% off your first purchase in store or online at hesterncook.com. It's sweater weather and soup season, y'all. Laura Beth here to tell you about Zoop. Z-O-U-P. Zoop broths bring flavor to southern staples like really great grits, while their soups provide a comforting meal. Zoop is available at your favorite retailers across the country, including Instacart and online at walmart.com. For you Amazon shoppers, use promo code 20 Magnolias. 20 Magnolias to get 20% off your first purchase on Amazon. Learn more at zoopbroth.com. And now, on with the show. The Steel Magnolias podcast is always coming back to the theme of Southern hospitality. We love any excuse to open our hearts and our doors to others. So today, we wanted to discuss the origins of Friendsgiving and how that can look at your dinner table. But for now, pull up a chair at our proverbial table. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. Welcome back, y'all. Wait, you've got your laptop. I Are you do. doing this electronically today? <laughs> I have regular paper notes because, you know, that's how who I am. I just looked across the way and saw that your yes, laptop yes. is open. Well, don't, okay. don't be too impressed. But there was one um, site that I found that had so much good information that I'm like, that would be uh, dumb to print all of that out. I'll just have it up in front of me. Aren't you saving trees today? I love it. Well, we're talking about Friendsgiving. The word Friendsgiving officially added to the Webster's Dictionary in January of 2020. Yes, I found that same piece of information. Now, Now, funny enough, a lot of times when I think about funny Thanksgiving bits, I do think about Monica from Friends (laughs) dancing around with that turkey on her head. If you know, you know. And I also read that, according to Webster, that the earliest use of the term Friendsgiving dates back to a 2007 tweet, but some people credit the hit show to uh, Friends for inspiring the conception of spending the holiday with friends. So I don't know if they called it Friendsgiving, and I don't know what that tweet was in 2007. Yeah, I don't either, but it's in that show being called Friends, I can see how that word They spent all their holidays together. All their life was spent together. Never working, hardly ever. No, just a little coffee shop job from, you know, time to time. Anyway, so it's it's in the dictionary, so it's officially it's a thing. As is, I think of Friendsgiving, though, in addition to in addition to Thanksgiving, not I do a re- not a replacement of. Uh, yeah, that's just me, but I think of it as a in addition to. Well, holiday. I've got I've got kind of a list that I put together of just sort of the beauty of Friendsgiving, just some different things okay. that came to mind of just, it, this is a beautiful concept. I know. Um, but yeah, just kind of to your point, this should hopefully all be with the right heart and mindset that this isn't you saying no to your family and saying yes oh, to I your friends. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Because you don't want to do the holidays with your family. So you're choosing your family, as they call it. That's I don't think that word is actually in the dictionary yet, but I bet it's coming. Uh huh. Well, have you heard? Yeah, I see what you're saying too, because there are people that are like, well, I have my chosen family. Exactly. And screw y'all. That's your family. Yeah. 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 That's not healthy. That's not healthy. But what, but there is, like you were saying, in addition to, or there are circumstances where you're not able to be with your family right. for whatever reason, or yeah, just it may be a annual thing or just a thing that's just happening for this one occasion. So 
we wanted to dive into that. Now, the obvious thing is that for Friendsgiving, you get to be with your friends for a Thanksgiving meal, and that might be more fun than you're used to. That also might be a smaller gathering than you're used to or a larger gathering than you're used to either way. So that's a fun thing to think about. I kind of look at this as sort of a Thanksgiving meal makeover opportunity doesn't have to be. I see where you're going here too. It it could be the exact same meal. You could assign things and even assign recipes. You could be as controlling. Oh, I thought you were going to (laughs) say that like if you've always, for instance, you know, hated grandma's sweet potatoes, but you can't say don't bring that. You can at Friendsgiving. Well, and that's also sort of what I mean is okay. that there. this is a chance to just sort of freshen some things up with some new <laughs> recipes, and it just kind of gives Thanksgiving some new life. That's true. Also a great time to make the dish that somebody else in your family always claims. Okay. Right? So our mom, for instance, is so good at deviled eggs. Yeah. I would never recommend anyone else make the deviled eggs. Why would you if mom's going to be present? Always good at it. And able to make deviled eggs. But then it makes us not ever make them. We had a Friendsgiving recently. Guess what I signed up for? I brought the deviled eggs. And they were good. I I had one. I want a shot. And I only had one. So that's shocking because. Then they must not have been that good. No, they were. But I was wanting to make sure everybody got the opportunity to get one. Well, also with Friendsgiving. Timing wise, with everybody bringing a good contribution, we were more timely than a Thanksgiving day where you're like, okay, y'all, sorry, we're still waiting on the turkey. Oh, so true. You know, so the deviled eggs are getting gone by the half hour. Yeah. Yeah. Those can be an appetizer and get gone in just a few moments. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, again, if there's a dish that you, maybe you always get assigned a dish that you don't like to make. So you get to put that off on somebody else. But I would say more than likely, there's some people out there that are like, I'd love a shot at the sweet potato casserole to give my spin on it or to add the marshmallows or not add the marshmallows or whatever. But, you know, Aunt Martha always makes it. So I can't. Also, this is a fun time to think about if you're doing Friendsgiving in addition to a Thanksgiving meal, you could be getting ahead of your Thanksgiving day prep. Meaning oh, some yeah. some dishes are freezable. Not all. By far not all. But there are a few things, in fact So you just double it up and make it for it Friendsgiving up. and yes. Thanksgiving Day's a little bit easier. Yeah. I like how you're thinking. There's a in the November 2023 just the very recent southern living they have a freezer friendly favorites like to prepare ahead of time yeast rolls i think was on the list there was like a corn casserole on the list so you know hey pick one of those things pick that and then get it doubled up so that you're ready for your actual thanksgiving well somebody's got a host said thanksgiving yes or friendsgiving rather yes so that's the first step is We've got to have somebody to step up and That's open true. the door. That's true. Yep. Somebody's of their us. home. So if you have a circle of friends, maybe this is your year. Yeah. To pipe up and and that could be say another you'll thing. Host it. That if it's always at grandma's house, like you're not going to disrupt the peace and be like, I really want to host this year. You yeah. know. So do it for your friendsgiving. We actually did ours for our church small group. Yes. And we always have a meal weekly, but we just kind of threw out the, hey, would y'all want to do? Yeah. The whole Thanksgiving meal. Yes. And do the turkey and everybody bring their sides. And that's what we did. And it was so fun. It was so fun. No, yeah. So like you said, this is a group that we're already in a pattern of meeting with and doing a meal with. Yeah. And so that made it super easy. That we all contribute to. Right. So it was, I mean, I felt like it was the easiest that it could to be. transition we're doing Friendsgiving to. But yeah. And then I found out that the host family, he loves turkey and she rarely makes it. Yeah. So that was... Also and fun. Girl can make some turkey. I know. Yeah, it, that actually, we already knew that the leader of this group was a good cook, but now it's been solidified. That <laughs> that was perfection in the turkey moistness that I, I don't know that I've ever had it that perfect. It was so good. So, 
again, something to consider, though, because, you know, as this is the st- multiple streams, even if it's just, let's think about, like, maybe it's just four of y'all. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome still group. It's, absolutely. That's still four households that are coming together with different streams of traditions. True. And, and ways that they thought the food was going to look, or the day was going to look, or the time of the meal was going to be, or et cetera, et cetera, right? And one of the beauties of Friendsgiving is there's not a set. Right. It could be any day. It could be a weeknight. That's true. It doesn't have to be Thursday. That's true. It could be on Sunday afternoon. Anything you want. Time yeah. of day. Yeah. It's open. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I mean, depending on if you guys are going to vary away from being a traditional Thanksgiving meal or not, you could really change it up. You oh, know, that's if it's, true. If it's like going, a Friendsgiving brunch Yeah, I was going to say, if it's going, if it's going <laughs> earlier in the day, it might be more like a you know, some sort of quiches are involved or something else. But I hadn't yeah. even thought of that. But yes, it could be that or even that you do it. Yeah, if yours is always a dinner or, you know, a nighttime thing, you do it for lunch or whatever. But, you know, I mean, we're super traditionalists around here. So when I think about that, I don't think of that being a difficult thing to manage for streams or however many streams of traditions. I think of that being like, this is exciting because you're going to get to learn from each the other. The flavors of different ones. and No pun intended. Yes. <laughs> and grab and choose if there's anybody with a tradition out there that you want to now be all about. Yeah. Right? Or to, if there's one that you really love to share. There could even be something for the, perp, you know, for the actual mealtime. So food aside. That your family maybe always goes around and says something you're grateful for that year. or You know, yeah. like things like that. That would be fun to share with your friends and maybe not something that would just come up in conversation with friends unless you guys were having Friendsgiving so true. together. So yeah, deciding who's in, getting your host, establishing what's going to work for everybody. This might actually be stretching for some friend groups that really aren't accustomed to hanging in one of the friends' homes, right? Maybe you're more of like a maybe it's that you always. Shop. I, I was gonna say, are you always meet at the gym? Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, like, or a, oh, yeah. now we're actually gonna see somebody's house. Exactly. And, yeah, it's so vulnerable. But I mean, that's some of the stuff we love talking about on this program is just how how much connection that brings when it you meet really in a does. home. And that even just reminds me. And then me, add in break, that you're breaking bread and even more. Right. Now I'm already remembering that episode way back from Dr. Jerome Burt. Yes. We talked about how a dinner party can save your life because it's just, that was the theme of his TED Talk. And the it, science behind it's amazing. Yeah. Just the connection that can happen over breaking bread. So, yeah. Well, I uh, pulled something that may sound totally off, but I just... It came to mind for me with Friendsgiving, and I love it. And that is, I love how God is just such a redeemer of things, and he fills gaps that we have in our life so beautifully. Mm. And I, I was reading Psalm 68. I love this little passage. It says, sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds, rejoice before him, his name is the Lord. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing. And I love that because there are sometimes situations where somebody's literally fatherless or Mm -hmm. literally Mm -hmm. a widow or Mm -hmm. lonely in whatever way life may look. Yes, And he, in his goodness puts us in his family right yeah and so I even think there's just a beauty in the theme of friendsgiving to celebrate that yes in your life yes you know how he's filled in the gaps with other people that is good and just thinking through wow who do I need to gather yeah even to celebrate that yes thank you for being a person who's filled a gap in my life yes and that reminds me of our friend Susanna that we were just speaking with today and she was sharing with us that she's going to host her first Friendsgiving we asked her why she's choosing to now because she'll have her own Thanksgiving meal and she said with all of the health issues that her and her husband have walked through this year she wants to gather friends that walked through that with them to celebrate yep 
And so she wants it to be a meal. So yeah, she wants a celebratory it. thing. Yeah. So so she's giving thanks for friendships that walked through hard things with them. So I thought that's so brilliant. It's so brilliant, and you know, champagne can go with turkey too. It so does. Maybe it pairs you very the well. Cork. Pairs very well. <laughs> Anyone in Napa Valley will tell you that Chardonnay <laughs> goes very well. Oh, with Chardonnay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I said champagne. Yeah. But, well, champagne too, you but know. Chardonnay for sure. <laughs> It's sweater weather and soup season, y'all. Laura Beth here to tell you about Zoop. Z-O-U-P. Zoop broths bring flavor to southern staples like really great grits, while their soups provide a comforting meal. Zoop is available at your favorite retailers across the country, including Instacart and online at walmart.com. For you Amazon shoppers, use promo code 20MAGNOLIAS. 20 Magnolias to get 20% off your first purchase on Amazon. Learn more at zoopbroth.com. And now on with the show. Well, I found a site that I thought had some great tips. I'm not going to read all of them, but it was from Sign Up Genius. Oh, we use this all the time at my son's school for okay. like volunteering for things okay. at school functions. Well, yeah. they have 50 Friendsgiving tips and ideas. And I thought some of them were really good. It kind of got my brain working. I'm sure one of them is that they want you to use their service, but that's yeah. not what I was sending <laughs> you to this for. Um, we can link to it in the show notes. Sure. But um, one of the things that they recommend is planning early. You know, we're getting into busy, busy, busy season. Sure. Yeah. And so the earlier you plan, the better success rate you're going to have with your Right. With People your being group. able to come. That's why we're doing this in October, That's by right. the way. Yes. And I also think that meal is really fun to have not super close together. Like, I wouldn't want to yes. have turkey meal no. on Sunday and Thursday. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> just makes my waistline <laughs> expand thinking about So maybe about. you do one early November yeah. and late November, you know, later yeah. November. Yeah. That's but good. anyhow, um, and then just, you know. Using wisdom on what date you pick, you know, here in the South, you don't want to pick a big game Saturday. Right. When's, and expect when, yeah, that Wednesday everybody... Wednesday nights and Saturdays are off limits <laughs> for the fall. Sorry. Um, depending on what you're wanting to do, are y'all going to play flag football after you eat? Then True. you need to check the weather. True. What's going to be feasible, that kind of thing. Um, they have some tips on picking what location you're going to use you know, how you're going to do your invitations, that kind of thing. But they have some just really great tips on here in addition to, you know, planning your menu. Are we going to have alcohol or not? Like just lots of things to think through. And um, even a dress code. Like, do we want it to be a fun dressy night? Do we want to come in sweatpants? (laughs) That's a good call. You know, things like that that you – yeah. Would need to think through yeah. how you want it to look. Because there, again, is no rules that are tradition. Right. You can do yeah. it however you want to do it. It could be that you're going to watch movies right. together after. Well, then I don't want to be dressed no. up. No, no. that's That's what a we're doing. really good point. I had not thought about dressing and you know, formal. You know, are we going to do, you know, board games together? Right. I even thought another direction you could go that could be really fun would be to go serve somewhere together after oh, like eat cool. and then yeah. go serve together yeah. or something yeah. like that because that's very bonding too so bonding when you mission whether you just whatever that yeah general cause might yeah. be that yeah you're that's good I like that serving in some kind of way so anyway that we can link to it in the short show notes but they have a lot of great ideas of yeah well I like that you mentioned that because I off I had not even thought about stepping back and looking at this as something a little bit more to plan than the meal oh you know like if you're gonna have a whole evening together and all the foods coming in already prepped you might only want to spend up to an hour at the table so you might have another hour plus for outside play or serving people were expecting to hang Yeah. yeah so that's a really good point uh, while you're waiting on the food to settle for pumpkin pie, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's a really good thought. Well, we had the, like we, you said, the opportunity to have a Friendsgiving with our small group from church. And thank you, Lord, we did. Because 
our friend Shelby, who is originally from Sri Lanka. Yeah. Brought the green bean casserole. Now, on the text thread, when she said, I'll do green bean casserole, I was always already like, hmm. Crunchy onions on top. Interesting choice. Wonder what her take is. You know, because I'm thinking. Because she's always bringing something that's got a. It's very gourmet, fresh, but yeah. She's lived in flair. India, Pakistan, Thailand. Like she's got all the different ethnic flavors yes. that come together. So I too was a little like green bean casserole. That's funny. Yeah, because like, I, I don't picture in her. Yet. And I was like, what am I going to bring? You know, a few things that had already been taken. So I'm like, okay, it's getting down to like a few that we all know. And when she chimed in with that, yeah, I was like, okay. So does she cook with canned green beans and cream of mushroom soup? Because that's not what I she would. Yeah, it turns out she doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) So this green bean casserole. It, she actually doesn't have a formal recipe she followed. So she just... I think that's the case with most things she does. With most good cooks, too, is what I've realized, is they just wing it. They just know how things She flavor. also goes to the international market and then builds from that. Like, what did they have? Yes. So she did... She made her own sauce. Now, again... <laughs> Out went the cream of mushroom soup (laughs) that I was planning to use if I had signed up. She did use a small amount of mushrooms, garlic, medium-sized onion, uh, milk and half and half, butter, flour, thyme, fresh thyme, cheddar cheese, and bacon bits. All of that was in her sauce. Yum. Then she, of course, had green beans, and she topped it with, French fried onions, French's fried onions, and Ritz crackers. So I will put this in the And it's show one notes. of those where it's like, here's what she used, but you're just going to have to use your it will own. Be, yeah, it will be copy and pasted. <laughs> and it was delicious. It was so and, good. Um, I'll tell you something that. else that was a shocker to me at that meal. I love a good fresh cranberry sauce. Uh-huh. And I make a really good one. Yeah. But... There was one that was straight up store bought. It was Kroger brand. It was called Cranberry, Cranberry Celebration. Celebration. Yes. And it was quite good. It was so good. Yeah. If you're looking for a store bought and you like, have a Kroger near easy. you, that's a go to. It was very good. Very sugary, but that's how a lot of cranberry is. And that does taste so good next to turkey. Uh huh. I think. Uh-huh. Even if you make a sandwich the next day, yeah. do a little panini that's turkey and cheese and cranberry <laughs> sauce. Yum. You're so gourmet. That's <laughs> hilarious. A little turkey panini the next day. <laughs> so yummy. Uh, if all of this is freaking you out, don't let it. Just take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> you could truly consider gathering at a restaurant. For I mean, sure. Yeah, if you're like, I had, don't want to make that green bean casserole. <laughs> I don't want to make any casseroles. You need it at a it's restaurant. Okay. Yes. It is okay. Yes. I, I do think there's something special about being in somebody's home. Yes. But it's okay if that all yeah. is just like, eh. And if you're on the flip side, if you're feeling inspired, but you're still feeling a little like, oh gosh. I'm kind of still new at hosting. I'll link to our Southern Hospitality episode. It's very encouraging to just recommend that just open the door. Just open the door. Yes. Start with only inviting four. Yes. Start whatever. small. Yeah. And I think actually I hear it all the time at this table that we're sitting at right now. It's pretty tight when I have very many and people love that they about like it. That. But this is a unique table too. There's uh, like built into the wall cushioned seating so this isn't like but it makes you shoulder to shoulder yeah if there are very many and while that is kind of tricky if the middle person in the back has to go to the bathroom yeah there's but... something about it that people just really yeah. love yeah that you're yeah. close being full yeah so if true. your place is tight don't let that be the reason you don't do it because yeah. people actually might prefer it to right. be in the big mansion that's true but if you only have four plates that are good that you're wanting to use don't invite 10 over <laughs> yeah or, or go to hester and cook and get pretty paper there you go and then you're good paper goods are back and very much look like real plates these I days know. very much i'm so tricked so many times with flatware that's plastic right and you it looks brass or something and then you're like yeah. oh my gosh this is plastic yeah yeah it's so funny yeah there's all kinds of things that you can do with disposable goods especially at that store Yes. At Hester and Cook, yes. they have such good paper products that even blend well with real dishes. 
So yeah, jump into that for sure. This can be another place to have a little bit of fun if you want to play DJ and have a playlist or something. (laughs) To my earlier point, this could be a more fun meal than what you're typically used to at your own Thanksgiving meal. Some of your family members might be like, we don't have music, we talk. (laughs) But yeah, this can be when you pull out the Frank Sinatra playlist or whatever is your, your jam. Yeah. Yeah. You won't have teenagers rolling their eyes going, you know what is this yeah or, yeah speaking of kids maybe even establish is this going to be family is is are we oh that like totally is, needs to be if established this is a girlfriend group are we bringing spouses or significant others or are we bring in the kids or like what's the what or is, is it just the us dynamic? girls or is it just couples or what is this yeah yeah and if i am bringing them are they participating in everything or do we all want to pitch in and have a group sitter Yes. That has the them second outside one. <laughs> playing flag football while we're in the here. Ladder. Pizza for the kids. That's right. A lovely cheese pizza just for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just get all of that kind of stuff yeah. figured out. And back to the music, I was thinking this could even be your kickoff to Christmas where you're like, okay, first night of could be. bringing out the Bing Crosby. Could be. Yeah. The Andy Williams kickoff of the night. That's so true. Get you yeah. in the spirit. Yeah. We're so spoiled these days with playlists. You could, oh, I know. I'm guessing I didn't do this ahead of time, but I'll do it by the time this airs. I bet there's a good Friends Friendsgiving giving playlist. playlist. You're so right. On Spotify. I bet there's multiple to choose from. So depending on, you know, your friend's flair for different music genres. So I'll look for that and I'll link to it in our show notes. We're going to have all kinds of resources (laughs) for you all. Um, Well, we've done ours. We've already done ours. I didn't freeze anything or make enough to freeze ahead of Girl, time. Girl, I didn't so. even look at that magazine yet. I'm I, so behind. I've got the, I've literally got it sitting on this table and haven't is. looked at it. Do you see the stack? I do. I'm a little behind. It's catalog season, so catalogs that I've never even heard of are starting to come to my Where door. Where do these people get our, our names? names. This, this Especially last- some of them when I'm like, I couldn't afford a bath mat in this front gate catalog why how did i get on this list well i got a memo one for sure with my maiden name on it i was like two misses you know like you don't even know me well anymore and i'm not in the seniors category just yet so so funny anyway we do hope you guys have a fun time planning this if this is something that you want to put together for your friends and yeah I wish we could have one and like a listener Friendsgiving. That would be so fun. So we're we're with you in spirit. You can put on a Steel Magnolias podcast while you're preparing your meal. And yeah, peace be with y'all on your sweatshirt. That's right. And, and uh, maybe you even wear that when you go and uh-huh. tell people about the show. That's right. Tell your friends, y'all. Okay, have a great week. And again, peace be with y'all.